for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Uh, Philip Martin, Johnny. Got your passport ready? Where to now? French Riviera. Town called Cassis. Just got a death claim from there on a policyholder by the name of Arnold Bernier. Something wrong with the claim? Policies for 75000 It was written 33 years ago. Well, so what? Don't you ever expect your policyholders to die? With fishing spears driven through their backs. I'll be ready in an hour. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Care to join me in a quick look at the past? Okay, here goes. Back around 1890, Charles Dudley Warner, who was editor of the Hartford Current, wrote in an editorial, Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Well, maybe no one did in 1890, but someone definitely has since then. Our United States weatherman. He's quite a busy gentleman who works for the Department of Commerce. His job is to read thermometers, barometers, anemometers, and other assorted meters, which forecast weather conditions so the rest of us will know what to plan or what not to plan, like hanging out the wash or going to a baseball game. Information about weather conditions is also given to aircraft pilots and ship captains so they can plan their flights or cruises accordingly. Of course, they need more than just weather data, and the Commerce Department gives them what they need. For the pilots, the department issues aviation charts and maps and sees to it that air markers are laid out so that the pilots can find their way easily and safely. For the ship captains, the Commerce Department issues nautical charts and tide tables to indicate when and where it will be safe to navigate their ships. The department also inspects the ships to see that they're in perfect operating condition and issues licenses for the operating of the ships. So the next time you look up at the sky and wonder what kind of a day it's going to be, the thought might also cross your mind that many lives and valuable cargo carried by American planes and ships are depending on the United States weatherman who is also looking at the sky. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Washingtonian Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the harpooned angler matter. Expense account item one, $473.25. Airfare, railroad transportation, and incidentals between Hartford and Cassis, France. Expense account item two, $50 rental of a snappy 1937 Maybach Victoria. After an invigorating journey from the rental agency, marred only by an engine breakdown and a blowout, I arrived at the office of the man who'd sent in the death claim on behalf of Arnold Bernier's widow. Welcome, welcome, my darling, Mr. Dollar. Welcome to Cassis. Well, <laughs> thank you. Are you uh, Count Andescu? But of course, dear man. Huh? Count Laszlo Andescu at your service. You were here concerning poor dear departed Arnold Bernier. Yes, that's what right. What a ghastly thing to happen. So unfortunate, so sad. Oh, here one moment and the next, poof. <laughs> but why should we dwell upon unhappy things? You will give me the insurance check for $75,000 made payable to Magda Bernier. I will give you the receipt and, poof, we will have disposed of everything. No, not quite. Uh, just what is your position in this picture, oh, Count? Count? Perfectly simple, darling dollar. Count Lajlandescu renders his most capable services to those who require assistance in delicate matters, financial and otherwise, for a slight consideration, of course. You might call me uh, chargé d'affaires for the bereaved and the unfortunate. I see. Yes. Now, uh, what is this business about a fishing spear? Oh, yes. So inconsiderate of dear Arnold to come to his end in so sordid a manner. A fishing spear. <laughs> So indelicate of poor Arnold. Well, at least it's unusual. You mind telling me how it happened? I thought you knew, my darling dollar. Dear Arnold was engaged in what has so unfortunately become the sport of the Riviera. What's that? Oh, an insanity, my dear man. An incredible insanity which leads one to penetrate the very depths of the ocean, clad only in swimming trunks 
and a cumbersome, unbecoming helmet of some kind. Oh, you talking about skin diving? Well, whatever term one chooses to call it, it is a most incredible, ungentlemanly sport. Okay, Arnold Bernier was skin diving. Then what? But, my darling dollar, it was all so sordid, but so simple. When he had been underwater for over an hour, somebody found him. He was brought up to the surface, and there he was, dead. With a fishing spear on his back. Precisely. Now, so, who? We have disposed of the matter of dear Arnold's past. Not if his beneficiary was responsible for having planted that spear. Oh, my dear dollar, what a ghastly thing to say. Such a dear, sweet, lovable creature as Marc de Bernier couldn't possibly have been so indiscreet as to have done such a thing. No, why not? Well, this, this simply could not be. Would you think what would happen then to my remuneration for handling this affair? Yeah. Poof. I left the good count and drove down to the Bernier Villa to pay my respects to the widow. Her establishment was located on a bluff overlooking the Gulf de Leon. The scenery was magnificent. You are looking for me, Monsieur Dollar? If uh, you're Mrs. Arnold Bernier. I am. Sit down, please. Thanks. A beautiful day, is it not, Monsieur? The sun so warm, the soft breeze so gentle and caressing for the skin. You're a sun worshiper, Mrs. Bernier? I worship all the things that are most worthwhile in life. Oh? Uh... Beautiful home, luxurious furs, the delicate weight of perfectly matched pearls. You have expensive taste. Why should I not have? No reason, if you can afford them. It only requires money, Monsieur Toller. Most people can't dismiss the word so easily. Most people are not Magda Bernier. And Arnold was an excellent provider. I was wondering when you were going to come around to him. You think I should have mentioned my dead husband sooner? Sounds reasonable. But why? Well, you knew who I was when I arrived. That means Zandescu must have phoned you, so you know why I'm here. That is quite true. And you still don't think the subject should have come up sooner? Why should it? It is of no importance to me. What is it? Your husband's death or my investigation of it? Your husband was murdered, Mrs. Bernier. Aren't you interested in determining who did it? It would not give Arnold back his life. No, but it could affect yours if you were involved in it in some way. A rather fantastic conception, Monsieur Dollar. If you must pursue this pointless investigation, I suggest you obtain all your future information from the Agent de Police Inspector Lanier. Well, there's one thing I don't think he can tell me. No? What is that? How you really felt about your husband. Inspector Lanier proved to be a welcome relief from both Count Laszlo Andescu and the lovely, cold-blooded Magda Bernier. But he wasn't a great deal more enlightening. Yes, Mr. Dollar, skin diving was a favorite pastime of Monsieur Bernier. He would often indulge in it hours at a time. He used some kind of aqua lung equipment, Inspector? The uh, helmet and face mask equipped with compressed air. It enabled him to stay down underwater for approximately an hour at a time. Only this time, he did not come up. Mm-hmm. Who discovered the body? Monsieur David Knopf. Who is he? A young American scientist who is conducting underwater explorations along the Cassis coast. He has a small ship, the Diana, from which he operates collecting marine specimens. Uh-huh. He had reached a depth of some hundred feet and was about to return to the surface when he noticed a small grotto in one side of the bluff. Lying just inside the entrance was the body of Monsieur Bernier. With a fishing spear thrown, huh? Precisely. So... Sometime between 10.30 and noon, someone met Bernier underwater and killed him. Any idea who it could have been? At this time of year, the cove is filled with underwater swimmers, indulging in this latest craze of the Riviera. Yeah. And what about the spear itself? An ordinary fishing spear discharged from a compressed air tube. Its counterpart may be found in hundreds of hands. Any personal suspects on your list? I'm afraid not. What about uh, Magda Bernier? Well, certainly there was no financial motivation. There's a $75,000 insurance policy. I assure you, that means nothing. Bernier was an immensely wealthy man. Well, what about business associates? He had been retired for 20 years. An attorney by the name of Armand Gauthier in Marseille handles his affairs. We have checked. They're in perfect order. Any uh, personal enemies? 
So far as we have been able to ascertain, none. Well, he obviously had one. Well, thanks for your time, Inspector. But, Qua, I regret only that I could not have been of more immediate assistance, but if there is anything you wish to... Pardon. Oh, sure, go ahead. Inspector Laniel. Oui, one moment, please. It is for you, Monsieur Dollar. Oh, thanks. Hello? Uh, you Johnny Dollar, the insurance man? That's right. Who's this? Uh, my name's David North. I'd like to talk to you. What about? The murder of Arnold Bernier. What do you know about it? Well, let's save that for our talk. Okay. Where do we get together? There's a cafe in town, the Golden Pheasant. I'll meet you there. How soon? Oh, about a half hour. Who told you I'd be here? Andescu or Magda Bernier? Magda? Why should she have called you about that? Well, who else did you expect her to call, Dollar? We're going to be married, aren't we? There were some half dozen sailors and roustabouts seated around the Golden Pheasant, but no sign of anyone who might be an American Marine scientist by the name of David North. So I took over one of the tables, ordered a cognac to help pass the time, and waited. than an hour had passed, and North still hadn't turned up. I was about to call it quits when the place was enlivened by a new arrival. Ah, Dollar! <laughs> a magnificent coincidence which just... Oh, Antoine? A vermouth cassis. At one, s'il vous plaît. Yes, as I was saying, a simply magnificent coincidence. You do not mind, my darling Dollar, if I join you? You already have. <laughs> so I have, yes. Which makes it all the more charming, does it not? Now so, you are here? I am here. We may now conclude our affair of business. You're talking about that insurance check? A trifling matter, I will confess, and somewhat boring. Nevertheless, it does concern money, and I dearly love money. It has so many uses, you know. Well, what about the little matter of finding out who murdered Arnold Bernier? Oh, that! Whew. This is of no consequence now, which is why I have sought you out here. Oh, that's interesting. No. You presented a problem to me. And what does the magnificent Count Large Landescu do when he is faced with a problem? He solves it. <laughs> you know who killed him? <laughs> but of course. Who else could it be but that American David North? Hmm? So, now you will give me the check. What makes you think I... it's North? It is so obvious, my darling dollar. North has supplied the proof himself by his suicide. Suicide? Oh, did I forget to inform you how careless of me? But yes, they are fetching his body up from the bottom of the gulf even now. When I got to the beach, about a dozen people were gathered around watching a rowboat heading toward the shore. There were three men aboard, dressed in swimming trunks, one of whom I recognize as Inspector Laniel. Take him to Dr. Geray at once. Use my car at the fast at the end of the beach. I'm quickly now. There is no time to lose. What happened, Inspector? Oh, apparently, Monsieur North decided not to keep his appointment with you. Instead, he went skin diving and in approximately the same spot off the point where Arnold Bernier was found. Any idea why? None. When he had been down approximately 50 minutes, the members of his crew aboard the Diana became concerned. Two of them went diving for him. Where did they find him? In the same little underwater grotto where Arnold Bernier was found. As you saw, he was unconscious. Fortunately, his aqua lung was still working until he had not drawn. But there was a bad scalp wound in his head. And this was lying on the grotto floor beside him. Hmm. Another fishing spear. Hey. Obviously, he was attacked in the same manner as Bernier had been. Any chance that the wound was self-inflicted? None. And in a way, that is most unfortunate. Why is that? If it had been attempted suicide, the case might have been closed. I had just uncovered evidence which could have convinced me that David North had murdered Arnold Bernier. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? 
In 1770, as one of the leading lawyers in Massachusetts, he defended the British soldiers who fired on civilians during the so-called Boston Massacre. His four years as president were perhaps the stormiest in our history as he fought to keep America out of a war with France. But an official war against France brought George Washington out of retirement as commander of the army and gave birth to the phrase, millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. If you don't have his name by now, here are two more clues. During his presidency, Washington became the national capital and the 11th Amendment was adopted. Who was he? John Adams, second president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. back to Inspector Lanyell's office. And while we waited for David North to regain consciousness, Lanyell told me about the new evidence. It was revealed in a court order, Monsieur Dollar. David North's ship was being attached for non-payment of a debt he owed to Arnold Bernier. What debt was that? North had run out of funds in the port of Darien on the Red Sea where he had been collecting specimens. And this few ran into him there, saw an opportunity to make a commission for himself and persuaded Arnold Bernier to lend North the funds. How much was involved? Some $2,000. That's hardly enough for a man like Bernier to get so excited about. True. But if you compound the money with North coming here and then becoming friendly with the lovely Magda... Oh, you figure the two-way motive then. By murdering Bernier, North saves his ship and gets the girl. Is it not logical, Monsieur Dollar? Well, it was before that little accident happened to North. Oui, but there is no need for us to concern ourselves with idle conjecture. When North recovers consciousness, he can himself inform us. Well, it might pay to conjecture about one thing, meanwhile, Inspector. What is that, Monsieur? The whereabouts of Magda Bernier during the past couple of hours. I had thought we had seen the last of each other, Monsieur Dollar. Well, it seems that you forgot a couple of pertinent things, including David North. Why should I have discussed him? Well, how indifferent can you be about the man you're going to marry? <laughs> did he tell you that? He did. David is like a little child who tries to convince himself that the world of his dreams is the true world. And uh, it's not? No. David worships me. There is nothing he would not do for me in return for a kind word or a hint of a smile. Like uh, committing murder? Yes, I think he would even do that. And did he? I do not have the faintest idea. Then there's nothing to his statement about marriage between you? Nothing, Monsieur Bader. Mm. Do you mind telling me uh, where you've been the past couple of hours? Right here, in front of this fire, Monsieur. Why? You, uh... Haven't been swimming? I seldom swim, Monsieur Dada. It was getting dark when I left the villa. I thought I'd better find out if North was well enough to tell his side of the story before I closed up shop for the night. Inspector Lanyard was just leaving Dr. Jure's office as I drove up. Is that you, Monsieur Dollar? Yeah, that's right, Inspector. Well, did you learn anything from David North? No, Monsieur, and we never will. He just died. Well, after that little announcement, there didn't seem to be much reason for me to hang around the town of Cassis that night. So I started out along the coast road toward Marseille. town, a gleaming black chauffeur-driven limousine swept by me. It was just time for me to catch a glimpse of a blonde head lolling back luxuriously against the rear seat cushion. Then it turned a bend in the road ahead and was gone. 
There were several intriguing possibilities as to why Magda Bernier would leave her fire and head for Marseille. I proceeded toward my destination in Marseille, the residence of one Armand Gauthier, attorney, the man who'd been in charge of Arnold Bernier's affairs. Dollar, Mr. Gauthier. Insurance investigator. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. I am not in the habit of conducting business at my home, Monsieur Dollar. If you care to call my office in the morning, I am certain an appointment can be arranged. Marc de Bernier might be happier if we talk right now. I do not comprehend your reference, Monsieur. Well, would it help any if I told you that she was number one on the list of suspects in the murders of her husband and David North? Come in, please. Thanks. Uh, this way, please. You realize, of course, Monsieur Dollar, that to suspect Madame Bernier of such crimes is sheer nonsense. Uh, uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, if you want a list of possible motives, we could start with um, money. Oh, ridiculous. Magda stood to gain nothing by the death of Arnold Bernier. No, why not? At the time of their marriage, he gave her a tremendous independent fortune. One that even a Magda Bernier could not dissipate in a lifetime. And the balance of his estate is willed to charitable institutions. Okay, then uh, what about boredom? Hatred? You have met Madame Bernier? Spoken with her? Yes. Hmm. Then you must realize that a thoroughly hedonistic woman like Magda can never become bored so long as she can surfeit herself with the luxuries of life. Well, there's still one other possibility. Bernier was some 30 years older than Magda. And David North was a pretty rugged specimen of a young male animal. He was also stupid. A callow youth, one who might be temporarily amusing to a woman like Magda, yes. But one does not risk giving up a way of life, monsieur, for the sake of uh, temporary amusement. Mm, how true. Well, thanks for your time. I have convinced you then? Well, let's say that I found out what I came here to learn. Huh? And what is that? The possibility of another man in Magda's life. But we have disposed of that, monsieur. You should have disposed of Magda's perfume, too. What? I couldn't miss it when I walked in here. And after your kind cooperation and character analysis, I couldn't be rude enough to accuse you of wearing it. I do not understand, Monsieur Dollar. Agreed that the desire for money makes an excellent motive for murder. But what is the connection between that and Arnold Bernier's hobby of skin diving? Inspector, send a diver down to take a closer look at that undersea grotto where he and North were killed, and I think you'll come up with the answer. Very well, Dora. I will have it done first thing in the morning. Now, better do it right now. And this should do it nicely, Dora. Uh-huh. You sure you want to make the dive yourself? But why not? I fancy myself rather efficient at the art, and if what you suspect is true, it might be best to keep it between the two of us. Okay. Is uh, this the lantern you want to use? Oui. Now, if you will help me with the helmet and the aqua lung. Oh, sure. Here. Ah. There. How's that? Oh, I'll see. That'll be fine. I'll take your word for it. Laniel adjusted the rubber flippers on his feet, shrugged the helmet and aqua lung more comfortably on his back and shoulders, and then slipped over the side. Forty-five minutes is a long time to wait in an open boat at night 
When you know a man is swimming far below the surface in a spot where two other men had met death before him, and I knew it must seem even longer to Inspector Laniel. But finally, he came to the surface. He held on to the gunwale of the boat with one hand and gave me a small wooden box with the other. A watertight wooden box marked marine specimen. I gave him a hand and pulled him into the boat. Then as he started to take off the helmet, I turned to the box and opened it. The marine specimens consisted of some insignificant-looking brownish weeds. I didn't have a chance to examine them more closely. It was just about then that I turned my head and noticed that the spear gun was pointing at my back. How oh, charming that we should meet again under such delightful circumstances. Is it not, my darling dollar? Where's Laniel? For the third time, it was necessary for me to leave someone below at the entrance to the grotto. You have no idea how boring this procedure is becoming. A fishing spear again? Oh, my darling dollar, how unimaginative do you believe me to be? Particularly after I only succeeded in wounding dear Mr. North. No, no, no. The dear inspector is lying unconscious from a blow to the head. Soon his oxygen will run out, and then poof. <laughs> this spear I save for you, here, where I cannot possibly miss. Oh, please, don't bother. You know, you are magnificent, my darling dollar, incomparable. I had not thought it possible for you to connect me with this affair in so short a time. Yeah, your little drug smuggling act has run into a few obstacles. What a pity. Such a magnificent plan. Obtaining the ashish for practically nothing in the Red Sea area with Arnold Bernier's money. Transporting it here aboard David's ship. Concealing it in the grotto to take it ashore when the time was ripe. A magnificent plan. Only Bernier put a crimp in it. Yes. Huh? And that was indeed a pity. Poor dear Arnold. But he came upon my underwater warehouse. No remorse about David North. Ah, uh, how sentimental can one be, my darling dollar? I suppose North was diving for one of those boxes to bring me the proof when you... Hey, Things happen pretty fast just about then. The box hit Andescu in the chest. The spear missed me by slightly less than a hair. My fist hit Andescu's jaw and he hit the water. Oh, a jolly good time was had by all, including Inspector Laniel. I managed to raise some help from the shore and get a diver down to him before his oxygen ran out. And Desco wound up in the local jail where charges are being preferred against him now. Two counts of homicide, two of attempted homicide, and a slight case of drug smuggling. I didn't see Magda Bernier again. I didn't think I could take any more of that. When you honor the death claim, send the check care of Armand Gauthier, Marseille. Expense account item three, $27.65, hotel bill and miscellaneous. Item four, $493, plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $1,043.90. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard Culver, Larry Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, Edgar Barrier, and Lou Krugman. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs>